we're going to talk about converting a standard car alternator into a wind turbine or other kind of alternator using permanent magnets. So here's your typical car alternator that you buy off the shelf. And as you take it apart, you can see there's a an electromagnetic rotor inside. This is usually powered up with 12 volt electricity and it creates a, an alternating pole field using electromagnets and it's not very efficient, maybe 60% efficient and it doesn't operate at low speeds. This has to spin at least 700 RPMs to get any power out of it. So what we've done is we've made a replacement rotor using uh, super permanent magnets and each of these is an alternating pole north-south, north-south just like you have with the electromagnetic rotor which goes north-south, north-south. And we put this together using aluminum for the rotor, steel for the shaft. We cut this special shaft on our lathe on the, in the lab, out in our shop. And the, the interesting thing about a permanent magnet rotor and coil system is it can give you up to 98% efficiency. So this part replaces our electromagnet, goes right back into the small bearing on that end. And it's covered with our original cover and front bearing. Chain screws that hold it together. And here we're getting our three machine screws cinched up tightly. Okay, so we just replaced the electromagnetic rotor with a super magnet rotor. And we'll check it to see if we're getting the current. Like I said earlier, normally you don't get any kind of a current flow with a standard automotive alternator because it's got to spin at least 700 RPMs and we're not going to spin our wind turbine that fast. So here we see just by spinning it by hand getting a, a voltage looks like two to four volts just spinning it by hand. You can see on our display getting four volts there, three, two, 
that's just spinning it by hand relatively slowly, so it's working at a very low speed. So that's an important part. That's the most important part in putting together a, a wind turbine. You have to have the right kind of alternator or you're not going to get any current at low speeds. I'll just take a couple of minutes to explain how we made our permanent magnet rotor. This is the normal electromagnetic rotor. You can see the windings down inside and the electromagnetic field magnetizes this pole and this pole as opposite poles. So to start out with we have to make a, a shaft that's very similar to this shaft in dimensions to fit back into our bearings. And then we had to make a plate out of aluminum because aluminum is non-magnetic. And after we drilled out the board out the center hole to fit the shaft, then we bored out each of these holes around the periphery with the mill, an end mill and then glued in and screwed in uh, some countersunk screws to hold our magnets in place. And this is a, it's an extremely strong magnet. Now this diameter right here has to be the identical diameter to these poles right here. So with this alternator that we picked out, this is a four and three quarter inch rotor here. So we had to make up a four and three quarter inch solid rotor here and then countersink our super magnets into the surface. But whatever alternator you're using, you could use a smaller one that might have a three and a half inch or a four inch rotor so you'd make your your permanent magnet rotor that diameter to fit inside of your coils here. This is your stator. So this has to be the same diameter as this to fit into this stator space. And that's the main thing is as well as getting all of these dimensions on the shaft right to fit into the original bearings and hold the rotor in the right within the center of the stator. Mm -hmm.